my son says I should introduce the video, so here goes. We are following Blue in his life. He started out as a happy loner engaging in fishing, swimming, snorkeling, gardening, painting, cooking, and going to work to support his lifestyle. Unbeknownst to me, Blue has a mean streak, which he demonstrated by repeatedly running over a woman with a jet ski, a woman who had refused his advances, and by running over people or sims with his bicycle. He proposed and married Geppetti, but their wedding was a disaster, which has led Blue down a very dark path. He wants to hurt all those he feels responsible for the disaster, yet he struggles with those feelings and the feelings of love he has for these people. To say the least, Blue was a little unhinged, yet Geppetti innocently believes the best of Blue. Will Blue overcome his anger or will he slide further into the abyss? Blue decides he's going to visit the home of his sister-in-laws. He has devised a plan and even mixing concoctions to complete his plan. He is greeted warmly by Frieza, who is the second eldest sister to Geppetti. She tells him how badly she feels about the wedding, how the wedding went, and she knows that Geppetti is struggling with depression over the event. She felt betrayed by all those she holds dear. Frieza suggests they do a renewal vow ceremony, so perhaps things will go a little better. Blue feels that the moment is gone and can't be relived by a new event. It will never remove the hurt for her, and for him it would only emphasize the catastrophe. She says she understands. She tells him all the things that she and her sisters have been up to, how successful her gallery exhibit went, how Koran had won the cooking competition, how Conte's team was going to the national championship, and how Odan had taken an interest in astronomy. Blue grinned to himself. Odin may like to cook, but he wasn't the accomplished chef Blue was. Thus, this household had always enjoyed Blue cooking meals for them, but all this talk had only made him angrier. And so he thought about what he really felt, what he really wanted to do, and he offered to make dinner for them. In his mind, he was constructing what he should be making for them. What would be the right meal? It could be Nigeri. That was too obvious. No, perhaps salmon Nigeri? He searches the refrigerator for all the ingredients for salmon Nigeri and prepares it. Frieza is watching and chatting to him while he prepares and cooks it. She wants to know what Blue was doing in his job, how things are getting along with him, and he tells her, just fine. He had changed career paths because he wanted to become a mixologist, but he couldn't transfer to the mixology career once he had already become a master chef. He didn't understand the reasoning. So he had transferred out to another occupation, deciding that he would climb the ladder of it for a while, then he would transfer back. Oh, she said, that's very interesting. And he asked, so your gallery exhibit, are you having any more plans? She said, oh, you know, you know a gallery exhibit, you may sell a few items, you may not, it may go well, it may not. Mine went well, and I've sold quite a few pieces, and I've got a few orders, so it'll be a while yet. Well, Lou said, I've finished. Why don't we call everyone to dinner? All right, she said. So she took up playing with clay because she's waiting for everybody else to show up while Blue secretly pours some poison into the meal. He looks around just in case someone might have been, seen him, but it appears his devious deed has gone unnoticed. Patiently, he waits for everyone to come to the meal. Well, everybody comes, but Karan's the only one that takes a plate of the salmon Nigeri. Frieza makes some excuse she doesn't really care for salmon. Odan says he's not that hungry and takes a bowl of popcorn. And Conte, well, she's not even here right now. So Blue plays with the clay, fuming about the fact that it didn't go well. Then he noticed the cat. <gasps> he hadn't thought about the cat. Why didn't they shoo the cat off the counter? But the cat had already tasted the salmon. Now that was unfortunate. But Blue waited. He waited and he watched. He didn't see Karan showing any signs of illness or sickness or even seeming like she was going to pass out. No, she seemed to be enjoying her meal quite fine. <sighs> had he mixed the concoctions that bad? 
Had he been so terrible in his mixture? Or had there been that deep feeling that he really didn't want to hurt them and so subconsciously hadn't mixed the right proportions on purpose? She seemed to think it tastes all right. She didn't seem to think she had a problem with it. Well, should he try again or should he call this an omen? He wasn't sure. He was disappointed. He saw the church on the way home, so he stopped in and he debated about how ominous it felt, how he felt in a way trapped. He felt like the walls were closing in on him. Is there a God? He walked to the front. He walked to the front to kneel, to pray, to seek for guidance, to confess his anger and all his hurt. Does God visit wedding chapels? Does he? He wondered. This is exactly what it was, exclusively a wedding chapel, or was it? They had just prepared for a wedding. It seemed like a wedding chapel. What did he know about wedding churches anyway? If there is a God, I'm not saying there is, Lou says, but if there is, well, what should I do? Should I go back to the books and read a little more and study a little better and see what I did wrong? Or should I just, should I just tell you all about my anger and my hurt? Should I just ask you to, to do something to them, to strike them with lightning? God. I mean, they ruined Geppetti's wedding, and I, but it's Geppetti I'm worried about. She's so upset, and she's so hurt, and these are her family. Oh, what have I done? I tried to poison people I love, but, but they deserved it, didn't they? Didn't they deserve to be hurt like us, didn't they? <sighs> well, maybe... I should have just practiced my freeze way on them. Maybe that's what I should have done. I don't know. I don't know whether there's a God or not. I don't know. I don't know whether, I don't know. I don't know what I really want. I just know I want all this anger, this frustration, and this hurt to go away. I want to feel better. I want to, I want to not be so angry. I want, I want the people who hurt us to hurt just like we hurt. I want, I want. <sighs> Is there a God? Does he really exist? Is that just a fantasy? Is it? Just in case there is a God. Hear me! He screams at the heavens. He screams. And then he sits down on the pew and he thinks, This is a lovely place. I think I'd like to paint here. Then he goes home and writes in his journal. He writes about his failed attempt. He writes about his conversations with Geppetti's family. He writes, he writes about his church experience. He wonders if maybe he should go see the pastor again. Would it do him any good? Would talking to him do any good? Or, or should he seek some other type of help? Maybe he should go back and dance the fire dance. Maybe the fire elemental didn't hear him. Maybe the fire elemental is trying to tell him something. Maybe all the, this was just a freaking waste of time. Blue sighed, and he wrote, and he wrote some more. Somehow, somehow he had to get through this. Was hurting them the answer? Was it the way to go? Was it? Was it a petty thing? Was it? Was it a disaster waiting to happen? Like the preacher said about the son who tried to kill his own father so he could have the kingship? Well, you know, it's a, it's a very, um, popular theme throughout history. Sons wanting to off their parents so they could take over because they felt they were better or deserved more or they didn't like the way their parents were doing things or their parents wouldn't let them do things they thought they ought to. Yes, it's a recurring theme in history. So many times people hurt the people they love. And he stopped to think about that. If he loved them, why did he want to hurt them? If he loved them, what did it say about them? That he wanted to hurt the people that he loved? What was wrong with him? After all, he deserved to die too if he was going to measure it by that. Wasn't he the one that left the cake and the bouquet at home, even though they had had a nice, wonderful little ceremony at home? 
he thought that it might have actually deepened Geppetti's sadness over the whole matter. That maybe that was the wrong thing to do as well. He sold the cocaine, but he wasn't sure. He just didn't know. There are so many things, and there were so many plans. He could hit the books again. He could read those instructions all over again. Maybe he should practice his magic more. Maybe, maybe, maybe he should just tell Geppetti how hurt and how angry he was. But she was so depressed and so devastated. He didn't want to go that route. No, no. He had to figure this out. He had to find some reason, some clarification. The rock climbing, it didn't seem to help, even though it seemed like it did help Geppetti to go ski. And it was kind of funny to watch her fall on her bun. But don't tell her that, he said. No, he didn't have Calypso to go and wrap his arms around and cry on her broad shoulder. No, he didn't have her. Yes, he could do so with Pepper, but it just didn't seem the same. There was just something about Calypso, her warmth, her nature, even if it was cantankerous, even if she did try to throw the shears at him or more than one occasion tried to eat it on a few others. But still, he wished she was here. And he didn't know how to feel. After going and yelling at the church, after going and pleading with a god to bring lightning down upon his kinfolk, will that happen? Did God do such things? He'd always heard that God was a good God, not a malevolent one. But there are other religions that believe in malevolent gods. Perhaps he should seek them out. Perhaps he should study religions and find one that would allow him to do all things that he wanted to do. Would it give him some avenue, some hope? Or was he being stupid? Was he just being foolish? All these things weighed on his mind. Part of him felt exhilarated for even trying, even trying to poison his kinfolk. What did that say about him? For now, Blue would just have to say goodbye.